Hello again, everybody. This is Derek, and I'm coming back at us with another Wargaming in Miniature video. In today's video, we're going to be working on asphalt roads, blacktop, right? Uh, now, these roads are going to be usable in, you know, World War II wargaming and that's what I'm kind of focusing on right now my 15 millimeter World War II and as you know I'm making all of my roads throughout my entire series as a two inch wide road for 15 millimeters you can make these roads in any scale that you want uh, what I'm doing is I'm taking uh, short strips of road anywhere between 6 to 12 inches in length by 2 inches wide. Now I tried a variety of different techniques already experimenting for you so that you don't have to experiment and they're right here and I want to share those with you and then I'll let you know which one I've decided for my personal collection and we'll actually make some of those today. Okay, let's start with this first one right here. This is, I'm using stiff felt. Actually, in this case, I used this felt, which you can see it's got a little bit of a, a white uh, in, in it, right? So I used some stiff felt, uh, and that's where, that's the main core of all these roads is gonna be this stiff felt. Uh, you can still, it's still flexible enough that you can put it on hills or, you know, if you, depending on how your terrain lays out. Um, okay. And then I used paper. There is a product uh, called Asphalt. It's a lot like those green sheets of rollout terrain table you know, model railroading, grass, uh, sheets of paper that you can lay out on your train layout. Well, they make one called asphalt. And so I got it uh, because I was going to do um, the Lafir Bridge scenario a couple of years ago, and I needed some asphalt. And instead of using a bunch of... Uh, like AK asphalt paste, I decided I was going to use that paper. Well, when it came in, uh, it it reminds me of uh, the grass paper. It's just that the grass is gray, so it has like a uh, almost like a grass-like texture on it, and I mistakenly glued it down to the felt using white glue. So I used some PVA uh, and what it had done was soaked through the felt. Uh, the, the PVA was starting to come out the backside of the felt. I uh, placed it on some wax paper uh, I put pressure down on it, but with that PVA soaking into the felt, once it dried, the felt itself, you know, you're, even, though it's, even though it's stiff felt, it still drew up a little bit. It still shrunk a little bit. And when it did that, it caused wrinkles to appear in the paper. So if, and I don't know if you can see those wrinkles in the lighting, but uh, maybe you can now, but uh, the wrinkles throw everything off. If I had not used PVA, if I had used something like my Gorilla Glue Clear Grip, then I probably wouldn't have those wrinkles and it would be perfectly acceptable right it still is acceptable I could go back and do another one 
just to just to uh, see if the clear grip will actually uh, change anything because I did cut out a second uh, piece of the paper uh, specifically for this video because I was going to uh, if this wound up being the, my choice I was going to show you how I did it by taking this paper and gluing it down onto some felt. Well I think I'm going to do that off camera. So that's one way. Now you'll also notice it's also a very light gray. Um, well not light gray but it's it's a lighter gray. Okay and so there then I decided to take um, some felt and then I coated it with the Alex and I used my spatula here to ensure that I got a completely smooth coat on there. That was just like my dirt roads, but I didn't add any grit to it. I just went with Alex straight across, done. Had to wait for that to dry, uh, which even though it says you can paint it after 30 minutes, I find that it usually takes about two hours to dry. And then I went over on top of that with the AK asphalt, right? Um, using the spatula, ensuring that it was a completely smooth coat. And then I had to let that dry. And then once that dried, I had to go back over it with my knife, cut off the excess, just like in the, just like in the dirt roads. And if you haven't watched the dirt road video, I strongly recommend it. So as you can see, just like in the, just like in the dirt roads, uh, the white Alex shines through, and then I would have to go in and touch that up and clean it. Uh, it is flexible enough. The Alex makes it flexible, so there's there's no problem with that. And the uh, asphalt texture paste is also flexible, so. There's, there's absolutely no issue with this. This is actually a very good asphalt road. I would just have to go in and maybe touch it up with a little bit of, uh, you know, some paint, but it's too much effort. And it winds up making these roads fairly heavy. That Alex actually adds quite a bit of weight. Now you can see how flexible that is. But, uh, it's, if I was doing like an entire table worth of this, I feel like storing it would be very heavy. But a good thing about the heaviness is if you have like a hill on the table and you lay it on there, you're going to get, you know, it's going to lay flat on the, so that's, this is a good way to do it. I just, it's just too much effort involved in doing it that way. Okay, so we've got paper, and then we've got the Alex and the paste. Okay, and so I tried uh, the felt, but on these next two, I used cork as the under pavement right and so both of these are felt with a cork topper right and so is this this is felt with a cork topper now on this one i took the cork and then i put the asphalt paste on top of it so this is a uh, cork uh, instead of the Alex. I used cork instead, and I still use the paste. Uh, and that looks pretty good. Yeah, that looks that looks pretty good. Now on this final one. Again, it was the felt 
with the cork on top and then all I did was well on this in this case I had uh, sprayed it with black paint and then I felt like the black was just too dark right it, it felt uh, it felt um, like brand new asphalt and so I went over that with some German gray and so that it, it lightened it up a little bit uh, made it darker than that right but still pretty dark uh, but also more of a worn weathered asphalt and not a brand new asphalt so really this one right here is only felt cork spray paint that's it the cork itself uh, this cork gives it a texture uh, gives it uh, gives it a little bit of a not rough but it, it does have a little bit of a texture now this is not the cheap it's not the cheap cork uh, that has like tons of holes in it I actually made uh, a bunch of terrain using this and it worked fine I actually lined my mailbox with that other cork uh, because I had a couple of screw screws sticking up so I put the cork down so that packages could slide in and out but that's not a story for now uh, and I feel that this accomplishes everything that I need it to accomplish without all these extra steps right uh, all I need is some felt some cork and then I spray paint them and uh, by using the German by using the German gray I'm actually making the felt or I should say the asphalt not brand new so uh, so we're gonna make some of these today and I'm gonna leave these for uh, maybe to use in my games but only as an emergency it's not or I'm sorry this cork is not that expensive you can you can uh, get like a dozen sheets for like five dollars or something like that out of this sheet I've already cut out uh, four pieces of felt um, I, I keep saying felt cork okay you get the idea this is cork and so I've already made or cut out four two inch sections uh, and I on this one I didn't want to make an intersection because just so you know if it needs to be because I'm not putting any kind of edge on this this is it right this is how it's going to go on the table I'm not putting a I'm not putting a center stripe down I'm not putting any kind of uh, parking lot or anything like that uh, no side stripes I'm not doing any of that uh, but if I was needing like a T intersection boom we got a T intersection right uh, but the only problem I have is if I need any kind of uh, if I need a like a Y intersection you could do something like that but I don't like the look of that I think what I am going to do is make some Y intersections uh, but in today like I did in the like I did in the uh, dirt road video but in today's video we're not doing that in today's video we're gonna make some uh, curves uh, not not um, 90 degrees well maybe I, I mean I probably have enough here to do a 90 degree turn 
so we can mark so we can mark where the two inch mark is from here and then what we'll do is we'll curve it now it doesn't matter the middle the road can go in and out like this it doesn't matter the only thing that matters is the two inches where it butts up with another road but you don't want to have it uh, there so we got our two inches here we got our two inches there now what I tend to do is I'll, I'll give myself a couple of guidelines like I'll measure two inches and put a mark here and then I'll rotate it a little bit measure two inches put a mark there rotate it a little bit two inches give me a mark there give me a mark there okay and so what that does is it kind of gives me a dotted line on where and how to make a little curve like that okay now I'm also wanting to make a couple of very gentle turns nothing too maybe a 45 so and it doesn't have to be exact and I've got my 45 degree angle right there if I wanted to use that which I am okay so that gives me a 45 a very gentle turn we'll measure our two inch and then we'll do our little circle generating dots like I did before now the now the elegance of doing this is you can have a you can have a road turn to the left you know just like that right but then if I was to put it down like this you now have a road turning to the right so with that one piece you can go left or right with that one piece I can go left or right now this whole sheet I'm going to make into um, I'm going to make into oh you know I could probably continue this on I'm lining up the cork and then I'm lining up my ruler I'm going to mark it two inches all right so now I'll have two 45s with this last piece here I think I can make a Y intersection yeah let's do that I'm trying to decide where I want to put the end of this Y I think right here would be good all right so we go ahead and I'm um, anything with the straight I'm gonna use an exacto knife I tried using the uh, the Stanley there but it was tearing or causing the cork to rip so I'm using a sharp hobby knife this is actually a brand new blade um, because my older blade was doing the same thing that that is doing or was doing but as soon as I switch to a brand new blade it's cutting through this uh, cork fairly easily yeah without uh, tearing it up 
Okay, so that should be all the straight edges. So now I just need to pay attention to my curves. Now this is three millimeter cork. Um, I did use some two millimeter earlier, but two millimeter cork is actually more expensive than three millimeter. And the three millimeter gives your roads a little bit of depth, a little bit of a little bit of height. And if you put your built up areas, town sectors, hedges, fences, walls, if you put them on any kind of base that elevates them, you know, as as something to keep them from falling over. Uh, or like town sectors, this elevates the road up to the same level. Or close to it, maybe not exact. And two 45 degree angles. Now what I'm doing here is, I'm just measuring the felt to, uh, to the same length as the cork. Now the reason, now you might ask, why are you using felt? Why don't you just cut the cork, paint it, and put it on the table just like that? Well, over time, this cork will crack or break or uh, fall apart. But if it has a felt backing, it will, um, hold everything together it's the glue that binds now using these as um, as stencils I can just draw around them Okay, so I've got my <coughs> curves drawn on this felt. Give me a second to cut them out. All right, so we got all of the cork cut out. We have all of the felt cut out. The cork will just get glued directly onto the uh, felt. And then once it's all said and done, everything's dried and glued together, you can always go in and trim off any excess felt. So it's actually uh, better if the felt is slightly larger than the cork so that you can just trim the felt. But, uh, but either way, it's going to be okay. Let me get some wax paper out. Now I need to make sure this time that I've got enough wax paper out to cover all the straightaways. Now we're going to be using Gorilla Clear Grip to glue everything down. Now with this glue, you're going to want to get it all the way to the edge of all your pieces. Now luckily, because you're gluing it onto felt, there's going to be enough, por it's going to be porous enough that air will be able to get up into where the glue is and allow it to dry even on the inside. Position it where you need it. Apply some pressure. Now I am going to put something flat on top of this and apply pressure to it to allow everything to dry flat. Okay, let me glue these pieces. 
um, down to the felt and then I'll be right back okay so we got everything glued down you know there's a little bit of excess glue squeezing out the sides and on some of these roads you can see the cork is maybe just a little bit larger than the felt the felt on some of them are a little bit larger than the cork it's okay because once we're all said and done I'm gonna trim it down anyway uh, so right now what I would like to do is put some weight on this so that it will dry flat now I'm gonna put some wax paper on top of it as well just to ensure that whatever I put on top of there doesn't actually uh, stick to it here's that piece that I saved okay everything should be covered now I've got these flat boards but I don't consider that heavy enough so I'm gonna put some weight on top of that got some paint got some bases just weighing it down so now this is the part that we have to wait I have to wait till that dries before I or at least 30 minutes to an hour is what I want to do before I spray paint it all right so we're gonna let that dry and then I'll be right back okay guys we are back um, I have used this rust-oleum painters touch flat black I had sprayed this on my little palette that I use uh, and I've got the second set sprayed outside uh, the wind had picked up considerably and uh, my roads were starting to blow away so I had to get a box and put them on top uh, of the of the palette here and weigh it down so that it wouldn't blow away if you spray it black just just black it matches or very closely matches the asphalt textured uh, cork so I this is the cork that I used the asphalt texture paste on uh, and this is the asphalt texture paste on top of the Alex so you can kind of see that uh, spraying it just black works very well for uh, for asphalt but in my opinion the black looks a little too dark I want to lighten it up um, because you can if I lay it there you might be able to see this is a uh, a slightly ever so slightly lighter shade uh, and this one here was just straight cork and just like these sprayed black but then on top of this I used to my uh, German gray um, another great color and one that I would highly recommend would be the Vallejo spray Panzer gray I think the Panzer gray is probably a better asphalt color than the German gray so what we're gonna do is I'm gonna take this Panzer gray and I'm gonna spray on top of these and the ones that are outside currently uh, to get it because uh, this is just a primer to get it a little bit closer to this asphalt color 
All right, so I sprayed them, and instead of letting them dry outside, I've decided to bring them inside so they can, uh, so they don't blow away. And uh, this is going to take a few minutes, maybe, I'm going to give it about 30 minutes to dry uh, to the touch. And once it's dry, I'm going to put the roads on the table. I'm going to get some miniatures out, and we'll take a look and see what these roads might look like on the table all right so that'll be about 30 minutes give me a second all right so what i did was i just laid what i had made out just so you can kind of see uh what it might look like on the table i pulled out one of my church templates and i decided to pull the 15 millimeter church which would be this guy i decided to pull him off of there and put the 10 millimeter buildings in there to make a built up area mainly because I wanted to see how it related to the roads and the fields and uh, any hedges that I might be making or fences or walls the 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 men I wanted to see how they compared to the buildings and I Personally, I think it looks really good. Uh, yeah, these roads, they're, they're quite perfect, actually. And they don't want, now this is the light gray one, uh, but they don't want to slide around on the table, uh, mainly because the felt acts as Velcro to the game map right it's so once you lay them i mean i could force it but you know once you lay it down it doesn't really want to move anywhere which is a good thing because i don't know if you've ever encountered a situation where you got your terrain laid out there and then it gets bumped or moved i pulled out one of my uh dirt roads that i just recently made and butted it up against the paved road just to kind of see how it could be used with it. Um, I wonder if the end of this Y intersection could change into a dirt road. I don't see a problem with that. I think that looks pretty good. And we got our deuce and a half going down the dirt road. Now, I didn't grab all of my hedges and walls and trees and everything else i just wanted to have a little bit of a selection out here i just wanted to have uh, a little bit of a selection so you could kind of see how everything might work together on the battlefield all right well thank you for coming out and watching this how to make asphalt roads super cheap and easy actually a uh, piece of felt a piece of cork and some paint. Oh yeah, gotta glue it. But other than that, it's pretty easy. All right, so I will catch you in the next video.